of a faithful God. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for, let's all rise to our feet, let's all stand up and with shouts of joy and celebration, let's welcome in the bride, Chirabo.
think I have the best view in this building right now. Welcome, Gloria. You're looking beautiful. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mom. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here together in God's holy presence to witness the marriage of this man and this woman according to the ordinance of God, the custom of the Christian church, and the laws of this land. We are here to ask God to bless them. Marriage is a gift, a sacred union ordained by God himself. It is the foundation and bond that cements family, wherein husband and wife serve one another in a lifelong covenant of selfless love. The Apostle Paul compares marriage to Christ's love and commitment to the church. You see, friends, marriage is not just man's idea. It's actually God's idea. And he's the one who gives us the instruction, the direction, the guidance, and empowers us to be able to live out this married life. Those who choose to enter this holy estate ought to get proper advice and counsel, and not just any kind, but godly counsel. Putting God first overrides any hidden agendas, any points to prove, or any other sorts of irrelevance. When your marriage honors God, your family will be blessed. It provides stability and security to the lives of the children God we trust will bless you with, and it sets an example for your neighbors, your community, and this country is established on a firm foundation with healthy families. Therefore, I ask if there's anyone here who has any reason why these two people should not be lawfully joined this morning, say so now. So forever hold your peace. Let's celebrate together, friends. Moreover, I charge you both, Martin and Gloria, before God, the searcher of all hearts, that if either of you knows of any impediment why you should not be lawfully joined today, say so now. Anything, Martin? Beautiful. Let's celebrate with him. He's all in 100%. Anything, Gloria? Lovely. Let's clap toward that. So then in this moment, who gives Gloria to be wed to Martin? All right. So Martin, I want you to take your final steps as a single man, receive your bride and bring her to the altar.
beautiful. You may have your seats, family. Friends, when God created man, he did not intend that man should be alone. So he created woman as a helper for him. He didn't take woman from man's head, lest, man, lest she should rule over man, or from man's feet, lest he should trample upon her. But from his side and close to his heart, so that man would love and cherish her. As we proceed with these vows, I just want to take a moment and admonish the two of you. It's an exciting moment. I know you've been looking forward to this day, and finally it is here. So allow me to tell you it's not a dream. <laughs> this is real life. And from this moment on, you've got to consider each other first. For you, my brother, your wife's happiness becomes your primary responsibility. And the same goes for you, Gloria. Your focus is entirely on Martin. God established marriage that man and woman might have lifelong companionship. Fulfill those natural instincts and affections within covenant love for each other. Ensure that children might have the security of family life and that society might rest on a firm foundation. The sovereign Lord in his infinite wisdom has brought you two to the point of choosing to do life together as husband and wife. Your marriage joins you into a lifelong relationship so intimate that it profoundly affects your whole being. Depending on what happens after this two, three weeks from now, I'm not sure if you'll be able to fit in the suit, Martin. <laughs> but it's all good. Enjoy being with one another. Such love requires that you commit your lives to one another freely and without reservation to become one. One in attitude, in desire, as well as one in body. As Christ is faithful and committed and will never break his covenant with the church, so must you remain absolutely faithful and committed to each other according to the vows you're going to make here in just a moment. The faithfulness you pledge to each other is the basis for the security that each of you will need in the days ahead. We cannot overemphasize the importance of these vows that you're about to make. Because when we make a vow, God holds us accountable to that vow. And the good news is we have Holy Spirit to enable us to live out the vows that you're going to make here today. The vows serve as the cords of love that bind your hearts together as one forever. You have been running the race of life in different lanes, but today you embark on the most intimate and sacred of all human relationships. You begin to run as a team, not in competition, but complementing one another. So I'm going to ask you to face each other and hold each other's right arm. going to begin with you, Martin, as the man. I trust you initiated all this, and so we start with you. Martin, do you in the presence of God and before these witnesses promise to love and to cherish in sickness and in health, in prosperity and in adversity, this woman whose right hand you now hold, do you promise to be to her in all things a true and faithful husband to cling to her and to her alone as long as life shall last. Do you? I do. One more time, Martin. Do you promise? Do you take 
Gloria to be your lawfully wedded wife as long as you both shall live. I do. It seems like Gloria's smile has doubled. Well, Gloria, do you, in the presence of God and these witnesses, promise to love and cherish in sickness and in health, in prosperity and in adversity, this man whose right hand you now hold? Do you promise to be to him in all things a true and faithful wife, to cling to him and him alone as long as life shall last? Do you? I do. Gloria, do you take Martin to be your lawfully wedded husband as long as you both shall live? I do. Lovely. I trust you have a token of your love that you'd like to exchange as you say your vows. Beautiful. Wedding rings serve as the symbol of that which cannot be measured. And in this holy hour, they are the outward and visible sign of an inward and invisible love which binds your hearts together. As they are of the earth's finest materials, so your love is the richest of spiritual values. As an eternal reminder of this sacred commitment, you are going to give and receive wedding rings and make your vows to each other. So I can see, Martin, you're very ready. So look Gloria straight in the eye. Gloria, I'm going to give you full permission to check him out and make sure these words are coming straight from the heart. I, Martin, take you, Gloria, to be my wife. I will love, comfort, and honor you, keeping you for better or for worse in sickness and in health, in prosperity and in poverty. Forsaking all others, I cling to you and you alone as long as we both shall live. All that I am and have, I give to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And with this ring, and my promise, I take you, Gloria, as my wedded wife. Gloria, why don't you wait? Yes, we can do better than that. Let's celebrate with them. Beautiful. It's now your turn, Gloria. I, Gloria, take you, Martin, as my husband. I will love, comfort and honor you, keeping you for better, for worse, in sickness and in health, in prosperity and in poverty, forsaking all others. I cling to you and you alone, as long as we both shall live. All that I am and have, I give to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And with this ring and my promise, I take you mighty as my wedded husband. Lovely. The hand feels different now, right? I'm going to show them what just took place. Uh -huh.
And now, by the virtue of the authority vested in me, as a minister of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, and as a pastor of this church, for and on behalf of the government of the Republic of Uganda, in the presence of God, and before these assembled witnesses, I declare you no longer two, but one. One in interest, in destiny, in love, and in life. I hereby pronounce this man and woman husband and wife. Whom God has joined together, let no man or woman separate. Well, Martin, now that it's all done, why don't you take that veil of Gloria? I'm going to step back as your pastor and allow you to do what only you can do. We want to take a moment right now and pray for the two of you, the youngest couple on planet Earth right now. So I'm going to ask you to face me, your pastor, and for the rest of us, I'm going to ask you, please stretch your hands towards them. We want to take a moment right now and commit this couple to God, pray for this brand new family. So in your own words, begin to pray, begin to pray a blessing upon them. Begin to ask God to do those good things that you'd like to see take place in their life. In your own words, let's just take a moment. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. You know them personally. You know their desire. You know their need. So let's take a moment right now and intercede. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stretch our hands towards Martin and Gloria and we say thank you. Thank you because finally the two have become one. And in this moment, Holy Spirit, we pray that the vows they made you will continually highlight in their hearts each day of their lives that they will live to fulfill those vows. I pray your blessing upon them that makes rich and you add no sorrow. I thank you, O oh Lord, because your word tells us that children are a blessing from you, the fruit of the womb, your reward. And as they as a couple decide and look to you, O oh God, we thank you because we say, let your will be done. May they have the children that they desire to have, O oh God. I thank you for the successes they've all enjoyed individually. And now as they come together as one, we trust in you to make them even more effective as a couple, oh God. I pray that their home shall be a place of peace, a place where they go to work and come back running because they want to spend time with each other. God, we pray your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take a moment to sign their certificates as uh, our worship team leads us in song. Oh, yeah. 
It is my honor, it is my privilege to present to you for the very first time on planet Earth, Mr. and Mrs. Mugume. I present to them their marriage certificate authorized by the government of the Republic of Uganda. Request uh, Martin if you could pass it on to your best man so that we'll wait until the excitement of today wears down before we give you such important documentation. <laughs> we also have uh, a church certificate that we prepared for you. Uh, in the former days, usually you'd frame it and put it up on the wall, but I trust you'll take a picture and make it your Facebook banner. <laughs> Friends, we began in prayer and we are going to close in prayer. My name is Derek Wadulo. I've had the privilege of hosting you today and presiding over this ceremony. Let's all rise to our feet. I want to bow our heads and pray one more time together and then I'll release you to go and celebrate. As you walk out, we're going to have our basket right at the back. We'd like to take a thanksgiving offering for them. All the money that we collect will go towards Martin and Gloria to continue their journey together in life. So I want to encourage you as we live, one more time, give generously towards them. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. Martin and Gloria walked in one way and they are living another husband and wife we praise you for this and even as they go and celebrate with the family we are trusting in you for a lovely day of celebration fill their hearts with joy may the function be successful and above all else oh god may this marriage stand the test of time in jesus name we pray amen once again, thank you for coming to Watoro Church in Tinder. Let's celebrate by allowing Martin and Gloria to be the first to dance their way out and you can follow them through. Have a lovely afternoon.